Thank you very much for um, having us here. It has been uh, something we have been looking very much forward to, to um, take uh, one day of uh, Porto Academy. We had uh, a whole week uh, four years ago in Porto, just before the corona, and it was a very great experience. So being back is uh, such a pleasure. So thank, thank you for the invitation and thank you for being here. Um, so Sir and I will um, present a few projects today, and um, and first we will um, I will give a short introduction to our office and and how we try to work through each project. Um, so what you see on the screen here it's um, it's where we are placed. It's a freestanding uh, backyard house in central Copenhagen, where we live on um, on the first floor with uh, some other um, offices that we. Uh, share interest with um, and um, at the moment we are about five six people in the office so it's a rather small office we have from uh, the beginning when we started in working together in 2012 and for full time 2014 so it's approximately 10 years ago we have been very focused on not growing too much but rather be uh, both of us being very much involved in each project and um and a way we, um, I, I will show a few examples of uh, an approach that we um, try to take through all projects. So even though this first example, it's actually not a building, it's a um, piece of furniture for the prime minister's official residence uh, north of Copenhagen, where we were asked to make this customized shelving system. And even though it's uh, just a piece of furniture, we were actually um, working with it as could it be a, a building? So we have been taking this uh, starting point in a in a um, building system. You could call it um, these uh, brass profiles and plates, and actually a very uh, simple system to make these three point uh, joints. And by using these cut into specific length and working with the progression and some small shifts we have tried to um, to make a piece of furniture that would um, work with a specific space so um, another example of um, how we try to combine the first initial idea of um, of the design process with a specific way of building a craft it's this um, small um, exercise that we made for uh, an exhibition called Alternative Histories, where we got this drawing from Peter Merkel that we had to somehow um, make a model uh, referring to this drawing. And even though this is um, this is a one to twenty, um, it's on one hand it's a it's scale one to twenty of something that would you could say be one to one. It's also a, a model in one to one itself, and actually. By making this model, we found out that we couldn't resist um, to to build something, not only to to pretend uh, something that could be built, but actually working with this um, in one to one. So we cut all these small uh, blocks and um, and build it. Um, as you see here, it's actually um, you could say upside down because it was a smart way of building it because of the of the gravity. So this is the final result, and if you look close to it, you can actually see how these bricks in, if you would imagine this being 20 times scale, then these bricks couldn't hang. They would collapse because of the weight, and you would have to do some reinforcement. Uh, but in this um, specific model, you actually have a, um, a, a bricks put on top of each other, and, and somehow, instead of... Uh, carrying the load they're actually hanging so it's it's a you could say it's a different structure uh, different structural system in this model and we really enjoy playing with with these um, very specific specific things so this is another example of this um, um, courtyard uh, in a, um, this uh, city block in Copenhagen to have this um, garden inside the city block with this uh, building for different facilities for the Owners Association and and trying to work with um, very low budget this maintenance budget of of this association of the people living there um, 
trying to make something looking more like a pavilion with this green garden than being actually this utility building with the uh, waste and recycling and different functions. So uh, by putting the the structure, uh, exposing the structure and working with these uh, different um, lattice works, we try to make a more green building without uh, actually adding an extra layer. We just use the structure that we had to um, to uh, use for making the building. This is the last example uh, for now where we actually worked with a uh, uh, summer house that we made some years ago and um, and we it was a historic summer house that we had to reinterpret uh, in this uh, protected landscape but interior um, was uh, the whole house was a new house living up to the new standards of a summer house uh, in Denmark, and we actually, it was originally this lock house, um, but we actually chose to build it with less, this very um, ordinary, um, like this timber frame structure that is actually super uh, common. Um, but by using uh, yeah. a pressure resistant insulation in the roof, we could uh, expose the roof beams that were also exposed in the original house. And by playing with different um, treatments of the wood painted or not different colors different uh, orientation and width of the of the wooden cladding we could work with the spaces in a in a new way referring to the existing house <clears throat> yes so um just let me know know uh, if if my voice is not traveling uh, all the way to the back. I have a bit of a cold, so uh, it's possible that Sebastian can take over if it doesn't work out. But the first project that mm -hmm. um, that we are going to show is uh, Tiberne. <clears throat> um, and um, Tiberne is one of, it's actually the first project uh, that we had uh, in the office. Um, actually, the foundational project of our office. <clears throat> That we got in two thousand and twelve, and it's um, it's one of two projects that we have made in Western Jutland. You can see here it's on this uh, small peninsula in in uh, Renkøbing Skjern Fjord, where we have made another project that I'll show afterwards, which is right next to the River Skjern that runs into uh, the Laguna. Um, and basically, uh, the assignment of uh, of the project was to uh, this uh, to uh, convert this uh, 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 the, the landscape <clears throat> at the end of the peninsula, which uh, uh, is a protected uh, wildlife area for migrating birds, um, in a way so it's uh, accessible for for the general public, uh, which it hadn't been until then. And uh, the area is, as you see here, it's. Uh, completely flat open landscape that is uh, very moist and uh, it's exposed uh, to the sky through its uh, sort of lack of details and it has this very uh, intense uh, sky due to its uh, position next to the uh, to the western uh, what the north sea it's called <clears throat> uh, the project is uh, financed by a foundation called real dania and uh, the client is uh, the Danish Nature Agency. Uh, just a few images to give you a sense of uh, the landscape. <clears throat> this is how uh, the the site looked before the project. It's a, a small uh, group of a cluster of uh, structures um, with uh, some newer, lower buildings, a thatched roof building, and uh, a viewing tower, which is a leftover from Second World War that had to be replaced. Um, and this is a new site plan with a new placement of a tower, the transformation of uh, of the house with the thatched roof. Um, and uh, you can see this is the position of, of the smaller, newer houses that we uh, had removed to clear up the image of the landscape. and. We have placed this workshop and also a bird hide uh, a bit further away, away uh, to achieve sort of um, <clears throat> an object of interest in the landscape. So 
This is the bird hide, uh, which is a small structure of the cotton steel. Um, and this is the workshop. And this is the house with the thatched roof. But I'm going to talk about the tower. Uh, the tower is probably the, the main feature of the project. And, uh, and to get back to something Sebastian was talking about, <coughs> it's um it's uh so it's this idea of combining uh of a combining uh, an architectonical idea with a way of manufacturing is is quite expressed in this project so you can imagine that we with this very open uh flat plane uh we didn't wish to introduce a profile that uh that uh, would uh, break uh, the horizontal plane, but we wanted something very light that corresponded with the with the lively atmosphere. And we were looking into different kinds of standardized structures that uh, worked like this. And we found that something that is quite common to the landscape is, is these round iron bar uh, pylons that has a very soft way of uh, breaking the light. And we looked into different manufacturers in the area. And we found this uh, Actually, a factory quite close to the site that uh, manufactured this kind of pilot pylon, <clears throat> and um, and we went into uh, a dialogue with the manufacturer, and we learned about the manufacturing methods, and we started to develop a design based on their way of producing um, producing uh, structures. <clears throat> so this is an early sketch. And we later found out that uh, a premise for the project was um, the uh, sort of an unbroken. Um, so you, you uh, maybe I need to add that that the site has been um, uh, has been subject for a professional bird counting in a very long period, and uh, these people uh, they observe the wildlife in the area and they note down. Uh, uh, how many geese and so on has been flying through the area. And uh, they used this 2.2-meter uh, telescope that was in the old structure. And uh, what we found out is that they needed the exact same qualities in the new structure as in the old, so as not to have um, <clears throat> a disturbance in their uh, data. So basically, to do this, we... Um, we dis we uh, figured out exactly the dimensions uh, of uh, the top of the tower uh, by looking into viewing angles and uh, the way that the telescope would move uh, during observations, um, and this created the top of the tower. That we and the top of the tower we fitted with the sliding doors on all sides, and with a hatch that would uh, close and become a solid floor. Uh, so these are the sliding doors, and here you see the tower in a closed situation and in an open situation. Um, and the tower is sort of, <clears throat> as a structure, is held together from the top uh, with the roof as um, as uh, the the part that sort of locks the whole structure down. So it's uh, made of these three pieces. Um, there's a few interior pictures this is uh, this is the hatch uh, to enter and the hatch is uh, made of a 10 millimeter solid steel uh, plate so it's quite heavy so it's outfitted with a counterweight which is this triangular figure that is um, um, located inside the center of the tower and when the when the hatch is opened it um, outbalances the the uh, the counterweight outbalances the hatch, so it opens up by itself. Uh, and this is, you see, you get this triangular figure that goes into the tower, so it's visible from outside, but now the tower is open. So for visitors <clears throat> visiting uh, the area, they can see that it's accessible, uh, the top of the tower. So basically working with this kind of, of uh, construction, uh, which has uh, galvanized the massive uh, uh, steel uh, structure. Um, it's uh, uh, one of the things that you design for is uh, uh, um, 
is the size of the galvanization tops. And, and for this project, it became a segmenting of, um, of the tower into these five layers. And they are uh, stepping in as, uh, as the tower progresses down towards the earth and uh, thus making the smallest possible tower. And they are also becoming lower as, uh, as they step in uh, to remain, uh, for the staircase to remain in the same inclination. <clears throat> So here you can see the tower as it's uh, joined uh, uh, vertically. <clears throat> and here you can see a joint between the segments and it's created. Uh, so every um, horizontal piece is uh, made out of flat iron and all diagonal or uh, vertical pieces are made out of uh, uh, round iron bars. <clears throat> and in the joints, we have this uh, small uh, jump or movement or offset that creates uh, a shadow in the joint and makes what is actually quite a structurally quite thick bring uh, beam appear kind of light because because you have this uh, small shadow in the structure <clears throat> and also this jump in the structure creates the possibility of uh, for the for the join, joining of the elements that uh, that the bolts are actually mounted directly into the into the load bearing uh, columns <coughs> and this is an element that is uh, uh, explode a few images from the construction <clears throat> yeah and here you can see so basically the structural concept is that that all of the um, uh, thicker elements uh, which are 55 and 60 uh, 50 and 65 millimeters in diameter they are they take the um, they take the the um, compression forces uh, and then all of the thin uh, iron bars that protect from that protect around the staircase from uh, falling out they also uh, work as uh, as tensile cords and uh, and transport the uh, vertical wind loads on the structure to the foundation. There's a few images of uh, of uh, studies of galvanizations for the structure. And basically working with this kind of uh, production, it's, it's very important to think about uh, the fact that uh, once each piece is galvanized, then, then there's no um, uh, editing or changing anything to the structure. So everything has to be perfect on the factory and then uh, and whatever you make on site has to fit with what you made in the factory. So it, uh, the process started by making uh, a template that was transported on site uh, for uh, casting the foundation and placing the anchors and then transported back to the factory. And the structure was uh, built one element at a time on top, starting on top of the template. So here's the, the engineer's drawing of how to move the tensile forces to the foundation and a section of the foundation and on the side. And actually what you see in, in all the four lower elements, are, of course, uh, the the staircase going to, to the top of the tower, but this is also uh, all structural elements that, uh, that keeps the tower uh, uh, up and uh, it's actually quite a rigid structure and this is something you can feel in the material of the structure so you can feel the vibration and when the wind is blowing you can even hear a humming in the material and this is something we found quite interesting and something that we used used to speak about also in uh, in in our presentations of uh, the project but something that is sort of hard to doc document so <clears throat> uh, as we had an exhibition, uh, invitation for an exhibition, we uh, asked the sound artist to to record the sounds, and he made this uh, this uh, artwork, which is um, basically a recording of the vibrations of the structure that is transported to the surfaces of uh, the exhibition space, and bringing the, the exhibition space into um, a sort of similar vibration. <clears throat> so the next project is Skjerno 
uh, which is a project, the project right next to uh, in the same municipality, um, which is um, which is uh, a transformation of uh, free pump stations. And uh, this is a quite uh, special, uh, the larger story of the project is that um, the last uh, 20 kilometers of the Scan River in the 60s, it was uh, it was uh, straightened out as uh, the largest land reclamation project in Danish history to create um, farmland. <clears throat> and there was erected uh, five pump stations uh, but it's uh, soon after they realized that that um, the soil was of bad quality and there was great Im environmental impact from um, from the project. So they realized that it was necessary to bring back uh, the previous situation and and that meant that uh, a huge another huge project was undertaken to restore this uh, the situation as it was before. This uh, was done in 2002, and uh, afterwards there was this, uh, of course, created this very large uh, uh, um, piece of nature with a lot of wildlife that was of interest to visitors. <clears throat> and the people visiting the area didn't have any facilities, so the basis of the project was to convert uh, the remaining free pump stations into facilities for um, for visitors. And this is how the pump station looked when we visited them the first time. So quite uh, cold and uh, and closed off and uh, compact volumes. But something that we found quite interesting was this um, uh, relief in the concrete facades, which um, which we believe might have some kind of uh, idea uh, in it about. Uh, um maybe as a reference to the to the soil that was controlling the run of the river or that it somehow uh, was supposed to look like a fertile farmland which was the uh, point of of the original project so we made we measured the structures and one of our measurements was this uh, re uh, measurement of the relief uh, which became the foundation of the project so Basically, all new structures here uh, reiterate uh, the the concrete relief of the existing structures in one way or another. And here you can see uh, the top popping up, which is uh, a wooden structure on top of the concrete structure. <clears throat> and the idea was to create a sort of seamless um, connection between uh, new and old, as you see it uh, from a glance but still provide a contrast in in materiality and also in density, uh, also to uh, affect the uh, very massive and dense character of the original volumes and to create a sort of uh, a change to the structures that would somehow uh, uh, create an interest in, uh, in, in exploring them. Um, Something that we also found quite interesting was <clears throat> the pump stations in this landscape has this quality of of uh, working as uh, as uh, guiding points because it's sort of hard to to really locate or understand your own movement in the landscape as it's defined by these uh, high grasses and bushes. But but the change of color of the structures sort of provide an idea of uh, the fact that you are moving. So either they can be gray or they can be gray or red or they can be completely red. And we wanted to somehow uh, create a relationship to this uh, changing character. <clears throat> and to do this, we worked with a color setting of uh, where uh, we painted the sides of the profiles of the new structures in a very sharp red color that would only, only be seen over certain angles and in certain places. Uh, so this created a very different way of changing with movement that together with the existing structures uh, makes sort of a special uh, uh, play of the appearance uh, seen from afar. <clears throat> this is the plan of pump station east and an interior. And in the interior, again, this red paint is, is used 
and this is a frame view from the same structure. And this is pump station east, where the addition is on the side instead of on top. And we did this to to create access uh, to the building from the side, and in this way, uh, be able to use the the old gate uh, as a new window, leaving the gates open and installing a new window in the opening. Um, and here we we uh, sort of allowed ourselves to to uh, interpret uh, interpret the relief and make it a bit different, as it's not in direct visual relationship to the rest of the structure. <clears throat> and this is the this is the existing plan of pump station north the new plan where there's added a elevator and toilet and staircase uh, to the new structure and in the exhibition hall which is the old pump hall uh, we installed new uh, uh, sliding walls to protect the instruments um, the old instruments on the wall uh, that still regulates the flow of the water <clears throat> across section of the structure, just to get an idea of that's actually a, quite a lot going on below, uh, where also the new pumps of the structures are mounted. And the interior of the pump station south. And a window detail. And this is the top of pump station north, where um, one thing that we realized was uh, an issue with the sort of um, um, handling the view of the surroundings was the fact that that it very got very easily exposed from the top of this um, of this building. So we worked with this uh, structure that sort of uh, by going diagonally from the corners uh, divides the space into a series of spaces and actually creates a space for different. Uh, uh, situations for the landscape. So there's one facing the farmland, one facing the river, one facing the the um, the old profiles that held um, uh, soil profiles that held uh, the the river as it was in the sixties. And basically, the new structures are <clears throat> conceived of um, of uh, wooden profiles that. Uh, that are also load bearing, so there's no uh, main structure and uh, secondary uh, cladding, but just the actual cladding. And this you can see here from this image. Um, it's just a drawing of the staircase. And uh, yeah, basically the staircase is sort of the mediator as this dark passage that uh, connects the um, the old uh, geometry with the new geometry. And here a few images showing uh, the frame view view from the top. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so we have uh, one project left to show tonight. It's a project that has uh, very recently been uh, finished, a project that we've been working on for quite some years. It's um, it's a combined office and warehouse for a medical equipment company in a town called Kø, just south of Copenhagen. It's um, it's a client who um, it's an international worldwide um, company, but it's uh, owned by a Danish family, and uh, this is you could call it the Danish headquarters. This is where they will um, um, spend their days. Normally, the owners. And it's also the distribution of these equipments for Danish hospitals. Um, the project is, is a prefab concrete uh, structure. And uh, and in, in Denmark, it, it's, it's like um, as soon as you, um, you build a project that is just a little bit larger than a house, it's, uh, it's more or less defined already that it's in prefab concrete. Um, and um, so the industry has since the 60s and 70s been really um, helped by government to um, to um, yeah to make uh, all the needs for, for housing and, and build structures uh, possible 
in that time. And that means that in, in Denmark, especially, um, this whole industry is like really the way of building a larger um, structure. And um, when we started the project back in 2017, we were, of course, asking ourselves if this, if this would be appropriate to build in concrete and what would be possible to do within this industry. And, and we uh, decided uh, very soon to take this uh, challenge and to see how we could perhaps uh, work with this um, potential um, architectonic and also of possible sustainable issues. And um, that's what we did. So in, in, instead of trying to, to reject an assignment like this, we, we wanted to to work within this uh, issue. And we can also see that it's, it's um, I think it's not only in, in, in Denmark for sure, but especially in Denmark, it's, um, it's an industry that um, you can't change uh, change how how you build all these buildings from one day to the other, and it's uh, very fast evolving uh, for the better emission wise. So we have been talking a lot in in the office. If what will be first, if it will be that you can build without concrete, or if the concrete has become more uh, reasonable sustainability wise. So that's uh, um, some discussions that we had, and um, and also. Uh, there were di different uh, aspects, also an aspect about uh, avoiding a cooling system for the warehouse uh, with uh, ensuring a certain um, maximum uh, temperature was an issue. Uh, and all, of course, also the, the um, how do you call it, the, how, how long the building would be standing and, and a lot of aspects. It's very complex and, uh, and we decided to, uh, to take on this um, challenge, and um, yeah, as you were just seeing here, um, this is uh, the building. It's um, you have Copenhagen just up here, so it's about half an hour south of Copenhagen, and um, this is a local uh, a huge uh, hospital, and this is uh, an area that is uh, somehow related to the healthcare. Um, programs uh, connected to the hospital somehow and um, and the building is uh, placed uh, at the last last uh, plot in this area and um, as you see here it's um, it's placed so there's um, the access um, with parking and uh, loading docks uh, on um, you could say the back side of the building uh, facing a neighbor that is not yet known and then all the um, the offices and and the rooms for um, for the people working in the facility is facing this uh, green area and also keeping uh, the area open for um, the local uh, for the people living in the, in this local area so um so this is um, the overall, um, you could say, um, site plan. Yeah, the overall site plan and how the building is organizing itself, you could say. <clears throat> so as I said, it's in prefab uh, concrete and it's uh, actually in these sandwich concrete elements. So it's um, a load bearing um, wall. The inner wall is a load bearing wall and then you have insulation and, and um, facade. So it's, Super simple. It's just these uh, huge pieces arriving at uh, the site, and within approximately uh, four six weeks, it was all it was all standing. Um, so um, as I was uh, telling in the in the beginning, we try to approach each project by by um, trying to understand a specific building technique. And as I said, um, this is in uh, prefab concrete, so. Um, in in the very beginning, we we were studying a lot of how this works, and and um, we had the chance to do this workshop with students of uh, who would later become uh, people working with concrete um, as a profession. They um, were making these investigations where we were testing um, different uh, colors and textures and and this. Um, facade system that we would later uh, develop further. So these are some uh, examples from this workshop. And 
we also went to visit different uh, factories around Denmark to understand the very specific um, method because we found out that within this standardized standardized system, it actually varies quite a lot from factory to factory. Um, we had this um, program that is is very um, different, you could say. So this uh, huge closed warehouse and these uh, offices um, um, asking for for view um, inside uh, that you can uh, get light inside and you can look through. Uh, so so this whole complex we wanted to make, make it to make it a, a coherent building um, with all these differences and. We found this um, way of organizing the facade with this, these um, sections that um, that would that would either be an opening or a close, but always shifting with this uh, uh, fifty millimeters setback as a relief, and also different treatment with the with the concrete itself. So this is a axonometric drawing of uh, all the walls from uh, from the prefab. And what you see here, it's uh, from the factory, where you actually see it's on one hand very advanced. It's really like a factory, uh, very efficient. On the other hand, it's handmade uh, formwork, as you also see in the foreground. Um, and uh, this is uh, uh, to show the, the different uh, depth of um, of the surface of the facade. So uh, as I said, the building, it's a um, combined office and warehouse, and we have been working with this um, program by organizing it as a, you could call it an inner um, pathway where we have, uh, where you can walk through the building, where you have this variation of larger defined rooms connected with smaller um, corridors or um, different um, smaller connecting areas and um, and as you see here um, it's all in in one plan um, and we have the you, you see the larger rooms defined with different floor types and um, and these connecting rooms and by organizing this, we worked with the infrastructure of the installations, especially the ventilation. So by getting this uh, to all the rooms necessary, we would lower the ceiling where you see um, in this drawing where you see the, the gray hats and, the, and this, uh, the technical infrastructure. We have lower ceilings. So this is also a way of uh, organizing the different uh, room types you might see it here as well and um and this um very um different sizes of rooms all in in uh, one plan so here we have um an entrance and when you get inside you have these um so this is an example of a of, of one of these uh, common rooms where you have um, a more white surface and different treatments of the materials. So you have a, a thin white paint on the, the concrete. Here you have a plywood treated with a transparent, slightly transparent white paint. You have the acoustic panels and so on. And uh, in between these rooms, you have um, a more compact um, spatial um, connection. This is another example where you are somehow led from one room to the to the next through the building, and um, and uh, this is uh, this is from the main meeting room where you uh, again you see these. Uh, lower parts for the ventilation. This is somehow a specific um, solution with the same room high and low and these green um, colors from the 
from the companies uh, they have these um these green colors in the corporate identity somehow that we have been um used using in, in different ways um in general it's uh, organized with smaller uh, offices for concentration and um in contrast to this, you have the warehouse, which is also a bit more rough in appearance. And um, what was important uh, for us was to somehow make the whole building um, as one thing together. So the warehouse is open to the rest of the building uh, through these inner windows to this corridor that is connecting the different parts of the um, of the offices. So it's all. Uh, in, in one floor, but uh, various because the, the terrain is slightly sloping. So there's one meter in, in difference from uh, one part to the other. Um, as you see here in this corridor with the ramp. Um, this is uh, the, the central um, lunch room where everyone from the company would gather. So it's um, the owners of this huge uh, international company and the warehouse workers, they would all eat lunch there together. And and it's also important to, when you have these smaller offices, to have these, um, in contrast, to have these common places to meet. It's also why we made this uh, route that, that where you would meet each other. And uh, um, what you see here on the photo is like, um, could could look like a beam that um yeah sorry uh, let's see yeah so um what you have here it's um it's for the ventilation but something that we have been working with as a beam you could say spatially because um when you build in this uh, system we realize quite soon that the very perfect way of making the ceiling the the roof would be using these um, hollow core concrete slabs. It was uh, it was always the perfect uh, length for these uh, slabs, and uh, it, it was very efficient also for the stability. So, um, although we really like to work with beams as a spatial <clears throat> character, we it didn't make sense in this building. But on the other hand, we had the issue of um, of the ventilation, and we thought maybe we could instead work with this as a spatial character so um once again a model photo and this is from the final building so you could maybe on the very first glance doubt if it's a beam or not but very soon you would see that it's a it's too fragile and it's even hollow and you also see these um, parts so um in in this way we um <coughs> We somehow got back uh, our beams. Um, another aspect, um, as I said, we, we have these um, different floor heights, but actually the slabs are always the same height. So by um, varying with the lighter spaces and the more compact spaces, there's a difference in height. But once again, we have the roof lights um, that would be even uh, higher and bringing down the light inside the building. And um, and here you see a few examples of of these. And um, so, yeah, you obviously see uh, not only two, but three different heights of space that is actually, although the building is on one hand, you could say flat, it also works with, um, you could say, a, um, a vertical section. And, um, and these, um, concrete slabs that we somehow at first glance we were a bit like like uh, thought was a bit um, lacking uh, something to to play with because we really like to take these standard building methods and see what we can get out of them and we realized that making these roof lights you could actually choose to expose this rather beautiful um, you could say relief in in the that you would you would normally um, so what you see here so normally you would um, put them next to each other and you would pour concrete in between that's why they have this specific form but 
uh, by making a detail like this, we could actually um, we could somehow get get a, a special detail out of it, but also somehow get back the feeling that it's built of something and that we have these. Uh, it's like the most common way of, of making a floor uh, slab, and uh, and normally you never see it. Um, so um, this is another example where you have these exchange beams and um, and here we have it's uh, facing the warehouse where you have this inner column that we um, thought was uh, we wanted to not try to hide this detail but actually more like celebrate this column by making this specific detail of uh, built-in um, furniture. So this is a an image to show the windows. Um, as you see, you don't see the. You might notice that you don't see the frame, and once again, it's a it's a very simple detail when uh, making these concrete elements. Uh, as I said before, you have the load bearing inner wall, and you have the front plate, and simply by shifting the height of this and this. We could um, and and once again in the, in a horizontal section, you could um, from the inside hide these uh, window frames. So it's a super simple detail having a, a quite a, a huge impact of the um, of the feeling of the space because you you somehow uh, don't see the window from inside. This is another example of the same detail and. Uh, we went one step further, where we have the corner windows. We we even uh, made a shift, so we have the frame all the way to the front plate, and this is uh, to to play with the the fragility of this building system. So on on one hand, you depending on the fr frictions <coughs> in the glass. On one hand, you would see this very thin facade um only the front plate on the other hand you would through the glass see the thick wall behind and um and you have this more diagonal view from the um from the inside so making the space feel uh, more open to the to the exterior and um just to show how it has been uh, sold technically um with um with this uh, steel uh, profile uh, placing the window. Uh, another example of uh, of a window, this is um, also a covered entrance from a, a back entrance uh, and simultaneously leading light down through, um, through this window to the interior. And once again, um, a view to um, to the green uh, surroundings and the water pipe in the middle. And um, this is leading me to, um, to um, so coming back to the concrete elements that we have been working with. So um, one aspect that we have been investigating is to add a color. Uh, in the beginning, in this workshop uh, we did in the very beginning, it was color poured into the concrete that uh, maybe most people are familiar with. But we found this product with this lasure, this uh, very thin paint that would actually simultaneously give a green, in this case, a green tone to the concrete, but also um, leave the feeling of, of the concrete. And, uh, and working with this in different ways, we try to add an uh, aspect to the um, to the concrete exterior uh, also playing with the with the window frames in the same tone as the concrete and uh, as i was <coughs> mentioning previously we had um, the formwork um, so um, maybe you remember the photograph from the factory so this is a the smooth 
um, uh, this is for the forms, uh, the formwork side, I think you call it. Um, so this is like the most ordinary um, surface you would get just casting to the to the steel table. And then uh, in contrast to this, we have this exposed concrete where they pour this, retard this oil uh, in the formwork, and then you can uh, wash away um, the, the finished layer of the concrete because it's not getting hard. Um, and you would see this, um, these, in this case, we added these specific white stones from Norway, this Norwegian marble, calcite. And uh, by this, we were making this contrast between uh, different treatments of concrete, but also playing with the um, with this uh, shift in the in the facade. Um, this is also to show that we used the green paint. Uh, see it? Bit difficult to see uh, on all the the side of the relief. Um, would be treated green. You slide. You might. It's a bit difficult on your screen, but um, but this is actually treated uh, green. This light green, um, and and here again to to show. So the so it's about the contrast between the rough and the smooth concrete, but it's also to to emphasize the relief. Not only to have a shift in depth, but also to have a shift in the in in appearance, and it's. Uh, somehow to 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 work with um, situations where you have uh, windows or situations where you have more closed facade. Um, where we have the covered terraces, we have a smooth, we don't have the relief, but we have this green um, color. And where we have uh, these, uh, these um, situations, we also have steel uh, fittings that allow um, the different um, elements to uh, to be joined and in this case we wanted to once again to to emphasize these um, details so to make a uh, to somehow add uh, to the expression of the building to somehow um, you could almost say exaggerate the size of them and to give them a specific color once again to refer to the to this green uh, color from the company's um, history and and uh, playing with these two uh, different greens uh, dark green and uh, light green uh, as you were seeing before with the window frames we also use them for different steel details this is a fence um, where you have the loading docks and um, and we made um, two utility buildings for, for different supporting functions and um, they are um, made entirely of steel in contrast to the concrete building and um, on one hand they are in, in contrast to the concrete, making the concrete even more concrete, making the steel uh, more steel, but simultaneously referring to the rhythm and uh, and um, some uh, details in the main building. So it's something that we enjoy quite a lot to somehow introduce a new system, but referring to the other system and somehow making one even more uh, what it is at first glance and on the other hand breaking down the whole um, the huge concrete building this is a covered bicycle uh, parking with a huge um, gutter and uh, sliding doors it's uh, like the main building there are these pilasters uh, that would uh, be where the building is anchored to the ground and these uh, plates are bended and um, as a, a pump stations for instance where you don't have this uh, main structure and substructure this is also like these plates are the structure and stiffening the building and 
yeah, making the building with these large uh, sliding doors. They are um, made of these uh, prefab elements, once again referring to the concrete, but in a completely different um, material and technique on one hand, um, put together of, uh, made of these uh, different pieces. And uh, what you see here is uh, everything put together on site as built. Thank you.